Welcome to another episode of Pakistan on a Plate. My name is Neelofar Afridi Kazi. Culinary adventures continue, revelations at every corner. Today we will explore recipes from Pakistan's tiniest community, the Parsis. Who are they? A 7th century BC prophet, Zarustra from Persia, who introduced the idea of a one lord, a wise lord, the lord of wisdom, Ahura, who developed the idea of a monotheistic creator. For the first time, the concepts of good and bad deeds, a heaven and a hell, and most profoundly, the philosophical idea of free will was developed. Zoroastrianism influenced other religious philosophical traditions. The second temple of Judaism, Buddhism, Greek philosophy, Christianity, Islam, and the Baha'i faith. Zoroastrianism was the state religion of ancient Iran. The Persian Empire, which included Afghanistan, Tajikistan, most of Central Asia today. The Surastrians are a minority faith and people today. They are approximately 124,000 Zoroastrians in the world today. In Pakistan, we now perhaps have no more than 1,500 Parsis. Pakistan on a plate includes and remembers them. The largest Parsi community in Pakistan live in Karachi, with a prominent and prosperous community in Quetta, once upon a time. From a tiny fishing village, the Parsis arrived in Sindh around the 1800s. I have heard Parsis being called Irani, I wonder what the differences are. Both are Zoroastrians in faith. The distinction comes from when they migrated from Iran. Iranis are those Zoroastrians who immigrated much later from Iran to their new homes, including Pakistan, in multiple waves. They have retained Iranian, Persian, food culture, language, accents, and dress, while the later group called Parsis first went to the shores of India, then moved elsewhere, including Quetta, Karachi, and parts of Pakistan. These Zoroastrians are deeply influenced by the Gujarati, Bombay, culturally, culinarily, and linguistically. In the mid-1800s, around the time of the Indian mutiny, Parsis quietly set up shop while Muslims and Hindus were in conflict. The first mayor of Karachi was Jamshed Nusarwanji Mehta. Other prominent Parsi Karachiites were Dinsha Avari of Beach Luxury and Avari Hotel, the Kaursji Group, a shipping and large business, in fact one of the oldest shipping firms in Pakistan. Many distinguished Pakistani Parsis have made this young country proud. Distinguishing themselves in all fields making us extremely proud. In the 60s, Karachi had several Irani cafes, bakeries, unfortunately all closed now. One of these amazing spaces was the Shalama Bakery in the Metropole Hotel. Celebrating amazing Parsi chefs of Pakistan. Khurshid Sidwa, mentor of Armin, the original dessert queen of Karachi. Chili Mehta, made the first cream cakes of Karachi. Her lead chef, continues to make them and supplies Agha supermarket in Karachi. Armin Kaosti made the most delicious, incredible cakes while I lived in Karachi. Saira Ankalsari 
a great chef and manages the Pakistan Eats Fair that we all enjoy all over Pakistan. Driving into Bath Island, my old teen years abroad, lovely leafy quiet part of noisy Karachi, I'm here to speak to Auntie Toxie Kawasji, author of Mana of the Angels, one of the first documented Parsi cuisine books in Pakistan. Thank you so much, Auntie Toxie, for meeting me at such short notice. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Complete pleasure. <laughs> so, what is Parsi food? Our food has a lot of um, eggs. Okay. We love eggs by the look of things. <laughs> we shove eggs onto vegetables, any vegetable, and we okay. call it paida, you okay. know. So we have bindi paida and potato paida and tomato paida and bengan paida, you name it, we shove eggs on top. And why is that? I Take. don't know. I think the eggs originally must be the influence from Iran. I okay. think so. And also, uh, eggs is a sign of fertility, yes. but we are very prone to eggs. Okay. And then, of course, eggs cooked by themselves. Yes, yes. Uh, and one of the loveliest eggs going is akuri. Yes, yes, Which yes. is delicious. Yes, yes, yes. And, and then you have a richer akuri, which is called baruchi akuri, okay. which is full of nuts uh, with masalas. Nuts masalas. Yes. How fascinating. And, and that's quite delicious. It's heavy, but it's quite delicious. <laughs> what are the Parsi spices? Well, we use everything. There's a lot of uh, zira. Okay. Then there's uh, dana jiru. That's the Parsi way of saying it. Dhania and zira okay. um, combined. Okay. It's a special spice. Then sambar is a typically Parsi spice. What is sambar? It's a mixture of a whole lot of spices. Okay. And we need that for dhansak, very okay. much so. Okay. And in other things. Okay. okay. Best spices are there. Okay. And he's in Empress Market. <laughs> yes. So, um, are there any do's and don'ts? I don't, for food? Yes. No, I don't think so. So, are there any sacred foods, you know, which are related to uh, certain ceremonies and are not, uh, are not given to non-Parsis? Is there any... Originally, kind of possibly, okay. yes. Because um, there were some foods that were made especially for prayers, okay. made by the Mobed. Mobed is our priest, okay. by his wife, originally. Ah, nice. and, and they used to make a they still do, some of them, a uh, thing called malida, okay. uh, which is made out of a whole lot of grains and nuts and it's really rich and it's put there while the prayers are gone, going on, okay. uh, usually uh, for the dead and then uh, it's eaten, but so the, naturally that is not given to others and with it is a uh, sort of like a um, I wouldn't say like a chapati, but it's dry okay. and crisp, like a puri, okay. but crisper and bigger, okay. and uh, that goes with it. And so, what about, are there any distinctions between uh, our Parsis in uh, Quetta or Karachi and their culinary That's traditions? Okay. Yeah, no, I wouldn't say so, okay. except the... Um, uh, Bombay has the most amount of Parsis, mm. okay? But even there today must be maximum, if you're being generous, 45,000. Uh. If. We are down to 1,000. So, um, but that's not the point. Uh, we, we eat similar food. They have, oddly enough, in India, uh, names for, for instance, we say Jinga. Yes, for, for prawn. fish and prawns. No, for fish, for, fish. Uh, for prawn. And they say kolmi. Oh. You see, they have different names. Now we say uh, pomfret, which is an English word, but yes. we still say, or we say paplet. Yes. They say chamna. Okay. So there are different words for different foods. And which I have discovered. And are the culinary um, influences of our Parsi community over here, they, primarily in Sindh and Balochistan, have they absorbed uh, whatever that may be, the Sindhi and the Balochistan flavors? I don't think flavors? so. I don't think so. Okay. I, I mean, they might have taken a few just to make things easier by okay. using the ready masalas, 
but uh, basically our food is quite different. <laughs> so I I know of no rules or as a festival. Are there any other? So we have no rules, which is in March 21st, which is, in my opinion, the correct no rules. Okay. Uh, it's a contention. And What's the, the contention? Contention is that um, in Iran, it's 21st um, March Gee. because that's the first day of spring and that's the way it goes. But when we came from Iran to it, the shores of India, the calendar that they brought across got adulterated. There's no other word for it. Okay. It got mixed up and they lost a few years or a few months. So they made a new calendar. And that's called the Shain Shai calendar, meaning the calendar of kings. Gigi. And that calendar changes. Every year they set sail from Iran uh, in boats, uh, ostensibly just men, which is again very odd. And with these few priests, they had nothing with them. So whatever they brought, they brought in their minds. Okay. And the knowledge they brought was in their minds. So the prayers were all um, virtually um, oral. And now, of course, it's all written down, wow. but it came orally. So all the women that they married have been obvious. Local. I would imagine so. Yes. So people are not going to like me saying that, but <laughs> it has to be. And that's why we look so different. So then we have these two no roses. And then we, uh, we have different ceremonies for our wedding and okay. for Naujot. Naujot is when you, it's like um, confirmation, sure. okay. right? And what like, age is, does that Usually, happen? usually before puberty. Okay. So for boys... Yes. And girls? Yeah, both, both. Okay, so what are the foods uh, associated with Naujot? Originally we had on banana leaves oh, because yes. uh, being in India, the banana trees and one side sitting. And from the opposite side, the uh, person served you. Okay. Maybe I, th I feel originally people of the house served you. Yes. And they used to eat with their fingers, but now people eat with cutlery. Okay. And then after you finished, um, the bearer would come round with these wash basins, okay. you know, like the Victorians had, yes, yes. with the big pitchers of water, yes, and yes. you wash your hands. And are these specific uh, food items? It, for well, if, if you naujot and wedding, it would be similar. Uh, if you wanted to be traditional, okay. uh, you would start with achar, special achar, you which do, you is. You would start with achar. Okay. Well, to be on the, on your. On uh, your leaf. Leaf. Uh, achar, murumba. Okay. Murumba is like a sweet, sweet. Um, like a murabba. Yeah, it is a murumba. Okay. And wafers. That would be there. Okay. Then the chapati. Okay. And then the food would start. So you, egg again. <laughs> <laughs> fried egg. It would be fried egg. And it wouldn't be an egg. It would be eggs. Okay. Because people. Maybe not today, but in those days, people weren't worried about cholesterol, etc. <laughs> Really so good. then after that was the patrani machi, okay. which is the fish and banana leaves, okay. chutney and banana leaves. And then came, I'm giving you absolutely traditional. Yes, yes. yes. And then came uh, either sali ma margi, that okay. means uh, fine straw potatoes with uh, chicken, which is not spicy, uh, tasty, but not spicy. So you had the fish, which was spicy. This is not so spicy okay. and this would be there or you would have a thing called jardaluma chicken okay. which is chicken cooked with dried apricots really yeah and it's delicious i'm just wondering where did the apricots because you know apricots come from the north yes but we don't forget we came from iran <laughs> no, right. so i'm presuming yes. we brought that across yes yes absolutely so then that was the sort of the next course then white rice with um, plain dal okay uh, we call it mori dal okay and then a patia okay which is made um, with tomatoes and onions and that could have been with fish or it could have been probably with a uh, jinga prawns okay, okay. because you've already had the fish yes so it could be that or you could have had a, a palau it's okay. not a biryani it's a, a palau, palau yes, yes of course with meat 
and um, you could vary it over there. So that would, and then the uh, dessert yes. would be a thing called lagan ka custard, okay. which is like a baked custard, but it's got again nuts in it. Okay, is richer, boil um, burnt milk, yes, and it's made in one big tray and okay. then cut into squares and served. Okay, and what other festivals are there? Let's start with birth then. Okay. Okay. When a child is being born, the first child, uh, at seven months, the girl, the pregnant girl, it is a ceremony for her okay. uh, where the, both the mothers and mother and mother-in-law, the usual thing of giving saris and whatever, whatever they want, jewelry, money, whatever. And what the lovely thing is that um, these, um, I don't know what you call it, Laddu. Okay. <laughs> it's orange, yes. long. Okay, these are made long. This extra long. Yes, about this long. Wow. With a point. That's the main one. Okay. And that's put from the mother in law's uh, sari. She holds it out like this. The pallu. Pallu. Yes. She holds it out and the girl holds it out and it's moved seven times like that. Back and forth. Back and forth. Everything is seven or five or nine. Yeah, all in one portly. parcel. Yeah, yes. portly. Whoever is wanting a baby and hasn't got a baby, they give it to that lady. Oh. It's just a tradition. Okay. And then smaller ones are made for all the people who are there to take home. On the seventh day or sixth day, now I can't remember which. Uh, you, Probably seventh, if yeah, that's one of the days. Yeah, I would imagine so. You put a piece of paper, nice piece of written paper, uh, with a quill at that time. You put a quill and an ink pot and kept the windows open. And the fairy came and wrote the blessings for the child, Aww. which is so beautiful, it I is, think. Isn't so what we we did, at least what I was told to do, was write them yourself. Naturally, yes, there are no yes, fairies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so really, I thought there were. <laughs> when the little child is going to be uh, sitting or ready to sit, we have a thing called besna. Besna. Yes. It's very sweet <laughs> and the child is made to sit on the, we have patla, you know, I don't know whether you've seen them. It's a wooden uh, stool, okay. which is about this high. Okay. And even all our naujots, weddings, everything is on that. Okay. We don't, it's an always wood. All right. Okay. okay. So that it's clean and pure, etc. And no nails in it. It's all um, wedged in the feet. Okay. Yeah. You see, you're asking for it. How interesting. Yeah. No, I love this. <laughs> I love this. Okay, I, I really love this. I can go on for because, hours. Because, you know, Auntie uh, Atoxi, how many people know these things? I know. You know? I know. And like, uh, yes, in the, within the Parsi community, uh, they will know it. But I mean... No, even also part, that very it, few. You know, th this is part of our culture. Yes. And our heritage. Yes. So let's go back to yes, the so, so the little one is made to sit there and usually the mother is propping it up from the back and you are meant to give the little one bumps on the on her little bottom oh. seven times again and usually you get them crying. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, it's all very sweet and for that you get um, again mitai. Okay. You make mitai and put it on either side of the bench. Um, this time white... Um, I don't know what the Urdu word is, but it's called penda. Uh, penda. Yes. yes, yes it's yes. white, like a barfi, but okay. it's not barfi. Is they, it they cottage make... cheese or no, no, made no, out no. of koya? No, no. It's made... Milk? Milk and sugar and okay. everything. It's a proper okay. mitai. Okay. But, and they make it in the shape of a, a pan leaf. And, and you put, again, five. Oh, and right. then, of course, usual food afterwards. But this is there. And oh, you feed right. the baby a little bit of that. When they start walking, yes, that's called pagladu. Okay. So, 
again, the child is made to stand on the... The child really goes through a lot of ceremonies. <laughs> wow. It's, it's just for fun, really. Yes. And, and you know, you give a little sagan and things like that. It, as you know, in, in the Japanese culture, they focus on the uh, child. It sounds so similar because, you know, like at every stage of the child's um, life, yes. there are multiple how ceremonies, nice, you how know, nice, how you know nice. and they have a, uh, a boys, boy child day, there's a girl child day, and there's so many how nice. ceremonies how around interesting. children. So how this, interesting. It really reminds yes. me, you know, very okay. similar, okay. you know, and uh, it also sort of indicates how important children the child, are, of you course, know, in, in of the course. tradition. So, so coming back to G -G -G the Pagladu, the little feet are made now. Oh you know the little little feet. Um, no one does it here, but I had got the ladu and then made it myself. You know, okay. into the shape just for fun for my grandchildren. None yes, of these yes. things are. Of course, of course. only the naujot is is a must. Okay. okay. Naturally, others you don't become a Zoroastrian. Yes. On the fourth day, okay. um, af after our, uh, the person dies, this of course comes as common sense what happened in Iran. Okay. Because we had the Towers of Silence. Okay. Where you, Why is it called that? Because it's silent and it was high up on okay. a hill okay. and, and it made round like a tower, but open, okay. open to the sky, okay. so that the birds uh, ate the flesh. Yes, yes. Uh, so. That was the tradition that okay. how we laid out our dead, we didn't bury. Uh, the idea I think really was that uh, we are as such a charitable uh, community. Yes. So we've always been taught to give. Yes. So even in death, we are giving. The men used to take the bodies to the tower and it would take them four days to come back again, you know, to go up uh. and come down again. So in those three days, we don't eat any meat at all. Okay. It's vegetarian, totally. And I'm th saying, and I think anyone who thinks will say it, is because there was no one there to kill the animal or the birds or whatever. Okay. So you ate the vegetables. Okay. But we carry on with that. Okay. And then on the fourth day, we eat dansak. Dantak is associated with Yes, it. that's why Dansak is never served for an auspicious occasion. Never. You won't have it in any uh, wedding, naujot, a person's birthday. Or children related. Uh, nothing, okay. nothing. Do it. Thank you so much for Pleasure. talking with us, Auntie Toxy. I mean, real honor. Expanding our ideas and knowledge about the Parsi community and traditions, we will share celebration recipes here today as we enter the Parsi colony in Karachi. A clean Parsi gated colony, Parsi colony of KP Institute, which is an enclave in the city of Karachi. You feel the history of the people. Fozia Rohantin Mama is a very kind lady to share her beautiful Parsi delights with us. We begin with shrimp curry. Fozia explained to me shrimp curry. This is uh, something that many cultures and many culinary traditions uh, have. Like go on. That's yeah. right, in fact. I mean, that's what I was kind of thinking of. So how does uh, the it Parsi works. shrimp curry differ, if at all, from that? You see, goan curry is like more, it doesn't have so many, so many ingredients like we have. And it's thinner, it's like more watery, a consistency that we this have. This has gravy. Yeah. We dry roast the following masalas. Fennel, cumin, whole coriander seeds, chickpea nuts, almonds and peanuts. Okay. Now, this is dry roasted and kept separately and ground in a coffee mill, like a grinder. But before I blend it, I fry in a little oil the roughly sliced onions. How, how many onions? Two medium sized onions, lightly fried in oil. We're frying it and yes. then you add in the tomatoes, a few green chilies, say six, depending on how spicy you want it. 
As I said, while you're frying the onions, tomatoes, green chilies, then you even fry the adrak lahsu. So is this garlic ginger com combination? Garlic ginger combination. I usually do that, and this also you can take about six because this is not only for color actually. This is some spice. Okay. They're called Kashmiri. So here is some dry roast. This is wet. And then you combine them in the blender and blend them to a smooth paste. Like with a little bit of water. Water and any kind of vinegar. Now this is the time when we put the dry spices. Okay. Dry spices as in the salt. Okay. Okay. And haldi. Uh, uh, turmeric. Simultaneously, start making the rice which you will be using later. You have to stir it occasionally, na? You can't just leave it on its own. Clean the shrimp, add a little bit of salt, red chilli and haldi on top of it to give it colour. It used to be also used earlier on to preserve the fish. Now add the marinated shrimps to the mixture. I was told that colouring of food matters in Parsi cooking. Thus shrimps need to look red. Coat the shrimps with the masala and cook it. Add a little bit of hot water to create a gravy, thickening it and lightening it as you prefer. It's done. fish and I love Parsi food. Ah. This is phenomenal. Thank ah, really? you. I'm so happy. But be honest, whatever you know I have to say, I love it when mm. you can feel the spices which are roasted. You know there's a huge difference when you have roasted huh, you have to unroasted huh. and roasted spices. The the aroma and the flavor is very different. The next recipe is lagan ka custard and rava. This is a recipe which is had and enjoyed during birthdays, engagements, navjots, marriages, and happy occasions. This is how lagan ka custard is made. It's actually called lagan nu custard. Heat both the milks in the saucepan until bubbling and boiling. To this add the condiments, separately beat the eggs. Now add the saffron, nutmeg into the mixture and continue stirring. Now bring it off the heat. In the meantime heat an oven to 180 degrees. You can add a little bit of vanilla to the cooling down mixture. Strain the eggs through a sieve into this mixture one by one. In a long oven dish with a hot water bath, bake now the custard. Don't forget to line the baking dish with butter. Bake for about 35 minutes until set a little jelly-like. This can be stored for 10 days in the fridge and served up, cut into little squares. What do you think? How do you like it? Mmm! It's lovely! You really like it? Very nice! Not sugar coating, straight. Straight! <laughs> Very nice! Rava recipe. Heat the milk in one of the pans until boiling. In a separate pan, warm the clarified butter, roast the semolina,
Remember another tip I'm giving you is that when you have eggs and you put in the sugar to beat, do not put the eggs and leave the sugar in, huh? Yes. It will start cooking. Only when you're ready to beat it, that's the time you add the sugar. Okay. It will cook. I've pre-made this, I've fried this in a little ghee. Okay. It's a garnish, na? You just temper it with the milk. See, I'm putting this hot milk. I didn't sieve it, no. Oh, okay, okay. This I didn't sieve. Into the simolina that's already roasted. And stir. Add the simolina now into this mixture, making sure there are no lumps. Blending it, flattening it with a flat spoon, stirring constantly. You can actually change to a spatula to ensure the blending is smooth. You can also add a cap full of rose water or vanilla essence depending on your choice of aroma. Let it thicken. Pour it into a choice of your dish. Let it sit and set. On top of it, later, grate nutmeg and decorate it with the remaining half dry fruit. Thank you so much Fazia for teaching us these lovely Parsi desserts. I most definitely will be trying them in my own kitchen. You must try these recipes and enjoy amazing Parsi cuisine. Zoroastrians the source of many sweets. A major ingredient in our melting pot, the manna of all our angels. I would like to dedicate this episode to the late Uncle Jamshed Marker. Until next time, Khudafis!